Th this uh, is not my idea. The first time I ever saw this particular antenna set up was on Jim's mobile rig up at Mena. I thought that's pretty cool. Okay, that's what Jim's rig looks like. Now what he's built is a box up here in the center. It's got a bunch of connectors on it that you can hook ham stick antennas to. Pardon? Anyway, it takes two two antennas for each band. One is your driven element, and the other I'm calling a counterpoise. So what he's got here is three bands, or is it four? Yeah, it looks like four uh, bands on his. I only built mine for two. But anyway, it's a pretty cool idea. And Jim first got the idea looking in a one of the books by the ARRL there, uh, which is for portable and mobile antennas, I think. There's another view of his. Now, this is the one that I built. And we'll turn the lights on a little while, and I'll let Phyllis walk this around so everybody can see it real good. Mine is just, there you go, mine is built for just two bands, okay? 10 meters and 17 meters are my favorite bands. I would put a 10 meter antenna here and it's counterpoised directly opposite. 17 meter antenna here and it's counterpoised directly opposite. Both antennas are driven off of one feed line, okay? Really simplifies things. Jim, as you can see, he could do four bands on his. his this is a true spider type antenna, I guess you'd call it. But uh, I just thought that was a great idea when I saw his. And I finally decided, you know, I'm going to build one. And uh, ours are built a little different. And Randy Harner over at Halton has built one also. And his is even a little different. So there's a lot of room to play. Now, the uh, I have a list here at the end of the meeting. Y'all can come pick this up. It's got a complete set of parts and everything. And kind of a how to build this. It, it's really kind of a no-brainer. These little connectors, you can buy at CB shops, okay? They're kind of expensive there. I bought these off of Amazon. They came in a two-pack for like $9.95 for two of them, okay? If you see, they've got some little insulators, because if you use them in their, their typical fashion on a CB antenna or something, it has to be, uh, the antenna has to be insulated from ground. Well, when you build one of these, the ones I call the driven element, you do use that plastic insulator, okay, so that you can insulate it from this box. The counterpoises are grounded to the box because they will they will be they will have continuity with the shield on your coax when you plug it in. It, uh, you have to have a this is a one half inch hole if you're using the insulators. That's for your drivens. And then it's just a, uh, a 3 eighths hole that you use for the, uh, the ones that are grounded to the box. Now, I just used a piece of copper strap to go from the antenna connector to my two driven elements. Jim has used heavy wire on his 12 gauge string. good 12 gauge stuff and ring terminals, okay? You can do it any way you want. Randy just, uh, Randy Harner, I think he just used copper wire that he just soldered yeah, to bare everything. Wire, bare wire. And <clears throat> as long as it works, it works. Now, what you've got when you put one of these together is this. Uh, Jim brought these uh, antennas because these are six meters, so they're kind of short. If I had my 17 meter antenna on here right now, I'd be banging against the wall over there. It hit me in the <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, especially the 80 meter one. Yeah. But anyway, if you can see, he has put he can put a bunch of different bands on his. I'm only interested in the two, and that's fine with me. <coughs> Something else I noticed he did today, which is pretty cool, was he put these marks on here. So if he's looking up at his antenna, he knows which way to turn it because your radiation pattern is going to be broadside <coughs> either side of this. So you can turn the antenna where you want your lobe to be pointing. He also used a steel box, which I wasn't using my thinking cap. He can put a mag mount or something on top of this and put a two meter antenna on it. I can't on my aluminum one, there won't stick. But anyway, as you can see, there are several different ways to build these. Now his are built out of just 
electrical boxes you can buy at Lowe's. Okay? And they're really kind of reasonable. This one I built, it comes from Amazon. This is a Hammond box. I think it was $18 or something yeah. like that. And it, it's, pretty, it's fairly weatherproof. However, I did one thing stupid on mine. Who can tell me what it is? We manage your box upside down to the uh, top of your plate, so you, instead of you don't have it weatherproof unless you put a gasket around the top of it. SO239. I put my SO239 on the side of the box. I should have put it on the underneath side. It would have been a heck of a lot more weatherproof. See how he did this? I, I mean. That's why we all get together and discuss this thing and come up with ideas. I've already bought a new box. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, there's nothing special you need to build these except one thing. A stepper bit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, now, if you've got one of these humongous drill bit boxes, you probably have all the bits you need. My drill bit would not take, my drill would not take a half inch bit. Okay, so I drilled a one quarter inch hole and used that to make my half inch hole. It worked real good. I got this one at uh, Harbor Freight for seven or eight bucks. This SO239, you drill one big hole. It's a five eighths inch hole. And you put a nut on there. You can use the standard flanged SO239. You'll never get all four of those holes lined up. Forget it, it ain't happening. This is pretty foolproof here. So. <clears throat> That's the whole deal. You know, I got all these pretty pictures up here, and I haven't even been showing y'all. Ronnie, go through here. Yes. Quick question: How is that? How is that box smart enough to to know resonance of the signal coming up the line? Is it just going to be self-resonant <coughs> naturally? What I have to do, I had to take each one of my individual ham sticks, put them on top of my car, and tune them to the same frequency. When you put them on here and put them up on a pole, what's it going to do? It's going to change a little bit. Yeah. But it didn't change enough to worry about getting up there and adjusting the lengths of the whips. My antenna tuner and my radio takes care of that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir? Uh, just to add something to what Rick's asking, <coughs> all of the antennas are only resonant at that frequency. If you're putting 20 meters into a 40 meter antenna, the impedance is so high that it does not Effect. the other antennas that are resonant. Okay. So, are, by are, putting the signal on whatever band you want, for whatever antenna you have, only one of those antenna guide holes will actually be the transmitter. RF will go to the least path of right. resistance. Ken. What's got you? Let me explain something here. Is this an example? When you set this thing up, when you set this up, you will put only the tube for that band on here right. and tune it with your tuner, your antenna analyzer. And I took and I swapped the band so I made sure that both of them so I could exchange it with both resonant. When you put them all four on here, then your antenna tuner that's inside your radio or your external one, which is what I do, will automatically compensate for any extra on uh, it, and it's real, real small on the chain. Yeah, I did notice that when I got my 10 meter antenna tuned very perfectly up on my fiberglass pole, when I put the 17 meter antennas on there, it changed the resonance on my 10 meter antennas, but it wasn't much. Wasn't, I, as a matter of fact, it was so small I didn't even mess with the antenna. I just let the tuner handle it. I would imagine when you use that many, it might give you a more change, I'm not sure. Very, very little. Very, very little. And that's just the impedance from the additional antennas. Kill the lights for me. You can see this connector a little bit better. You can see the little insulators. You'll have one of these on either side of the wall of your box, okay? But on the, on, on the side that you are using for your counterpoise, you don't use these because you want this part to be shorted to the box, okay? But those are, there's two different kinds of these, and I messed up and bought the wrong ones the first time. You can get some that actually have a SO239 on yeah. the bottom on yeah. here, so you can just screw your coax right to it. That is not what you want. This is called a stud mount, and uh, 
These are actually kind of hard to find at the CV shops around here. I just ordered mine off of Amazon. They're not on Amazon right now either. Pardon me? They're not on Amazon right now either. That's why I bought them, buddy. Yeah, that's why I just told you I tried to search them. I couldn't find them. I got right. mine, mine, when I got mine, I bought them at the Flying J. I believe it's the Flying J there on Hurricane's uh, Industrial. And you bought all they had because they don't have no more. <laughs> no, I bought them and went back a couple of weeks later and got some more. Yeah, they probably got so good now. I just didn't be impatient. I just went ahead and ordered something online. This is the SO239 I was telling you about. You see, you just have one nut that holds it on the back. That's a 5 8 inch hole, and uh, that makes it really easy to put that on the side. Whereas if you have the kind that's got the square flange on it, then you've got those four little holes. You've got to try to get them match up. And mm -hmm. some of y'all might be able to do it. I'm too stupid. <laughs> it doesn't ever happen for me. Hey, this is the stepper bit I'm talking about. Boy, I tell you what, I, I wear these things out. I buy them. And I had a brand new one, of course, when I went to look for it, I couldn't find it. So I had to go out and buy another one. And I'll probably find the other one next week. This is how I center the uh, connectors on the box, whether it's the uh, SO239 or the stud mount. I just run a... I don't go up here. I come from the corners of either side with just a little ruler, make my pencil marks, and get you close enough to center. Doesn't have to be perfect. And that doesn't have anything to do really with how it works. Well, that's the end of it. That was it. Um, does anybody have any questions? How much money you got tied up in gyms, let's say, with those more band? Uh, the biggest thing, the price on it was the hand sticks. The uh, six meters were, when I got them, were $13.99 a piece, all the way up to the 75, which was $26.99 a piece. Not a lot. Yeah, the antennas are the biggest expense. Yeah, yeah. The boxes were like $4.99 or $6.99 for the boxes. Um, the clamps were, you know, packaged for $1.99 or whatever. Uh, and if you look on this, you got an L bracket here. And then I use what Ronnie has trouble with, which is a regular chassis mount UHF. Yeah, it works. Now, honestly, if you're going to set up real quick in a park or something, it might be easier just to throw up a, a long wire, you know. But if you're going to be somewhere for three or four days, like up at Mina or something, this is a cool antenna, you know.